Hi, I'm Doug Bowles, president of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Thank you for listening to Behind the Bricks. We're excited to bring you this exclusive and entertaining content about the world's greatest racetrack. Keep listening, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Indianapolis Motor Speedway fans, Doug Bowles here with you for another episode of Behind the Bricks. As we get ready for the Driven to Save BC39 presented by Avanti Windows, we wanted to give you a little sneak preview of just how Brian Clawson's legacy is living on here in Central Indiana, not just in the name of the race. We're going to start right here at the Indiana Donor Network and then travel around Central Indiana. So we're inside the Indiana Donor Network offices and I'm here with a face that's familiar to short trackers for sure and racers around the country, Taylor McLean, who's the senior marketing director for the programs around here, including the Brian Clawson program as you see her at racetracks, making sure you all are signing up we're right outside the Brian Clawson Legacy Suite, which has been here for quite some time now. Uh, Taylor, thanks for having us. This really exists because of the experience that your family had when Brian was donating. Yeah, you know, the Brian Clausen Legacy Suite is really important to us at Indiana Donor Network. Um, in 2020, we kind of moved and uh, facilitate donation now out of this bu building. So we have donors come here, we have their families come here. Um, and this suite is really an opportunity for families to spend their final moments with their loved ones. It's, it's really important. Um, it's something that our family, um, you know, really held special um, and held close to our hearts was those final three days we got to spend with Brian. And so, you know, the hope is for this to provide comfort to those families as well who want to be by their loved one's side through the entirety of the donation process. So let's go ahead and take a look at it because yeah. I, this isn't just a hospital room. This is an opportunity for families to be together in those moments as Taylor talked about that are super difficult, but also really special and life, life lasting. So mm -hmm. why don't we uh, wander in here and uh, yeah. check this out. Yeah, so when you come in here, the first thing we have is kind of a, a family um, space for, for you know family members to be able to hang out and kind of gather together. So we have um, some video games if we have kids that come in. We have um, some really cool uh, comfort shawls, blankets, pillows, anything to make the family comfortable. Um, one of my favorite pieces um, in this room is, is this letter from our family to the donor family um, who's being uh, served in this room. And so it's a way for us to just you know, extend our condolences for their loss, but also tell them that, you know, they're not alone in this journey and that their loved one is gonna save lives. So this space provides that opportunity for families to still be with their loved one, um, but kind of take a moment and, and kind of start to grieve a little bit. So it's connected right mm -hmm. here to where the loved one would be and where the family yeah. can be right inside this room as well. Yeah. Uh, gives them an opportunity to stay connected, be together, but also have a little moment to themselves if they need to. Yeah, and this space is really cool because it is a private ICU space. So, um, you know, our clinical staff, the people that are facilitating donation and facilitating this gift of life are still able to do their jobs without, um, you know, putting the family out at all. So the family can sit right here while, you know, labs are being drawn or tests are being run or things like that. And they can really, again, spend those final moments by their loved one's side the entire time that they're here. So the other thing about this, there's a difficult moment for a family here, but on the flip side, there are families mm -hmm. who are celebrating the fact that this gift is actually going to keep somebody else alive. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Um, you know, one of the moments that sticks out in my mind the most when we lost Brian was we were gathered around his hospital bed saying our final goodbyes, and I think it was my dad um, that kind of spoke up, and he was like, I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but there are five other families that just received a call that, that their loved one is going to be saved. In this very moment, they're gathered around their loved ones celebrating this gift of life. And so, you know, it is... Um, you know, a very heavy thing that we do here, but it's also a very beautiful thing that we do on the flip side. And um, to be able to have this space and um, allow family members to kind of go through that journey um, together is very special. So there you have it, race fans. You see Taylor at the racetracks as she's asking you to sign up to become a donor. Not only is she doing that on her weekends, this is what she's doing during the week, making sure that families are comforted as they are having a loved one give a donation of life knowing that their families on the other side that are going to continue to live all thanks to the fact that Brian Clawson was a donor. So I'm standing in Forest Park in Noblesville, Indiana, where Brian Clawson grew up right in front of this Indiana Racing Memorial Association plaque that was put here to remember what Brian Clawson did on track, 
but on the back side, it really talks about what he did off track and those five individuals he saved by being an organ donor. And Brian Clausen, when he won races, he said, parked it, parked it in victory lane. This bench says parked it. Now we're going to go see where the cars were built that Brian Clausen parked in victory lane. So we are at Clausen Marshall Racing right now, and I'm standing here with Tim Clausen, who runs this race team, but is Brian Clausen's dad. Thanks for having us. This is such a cool place. The history of Brian right here. Yeah, thanks, Doug. Thanks for coming out, and uh, always, always enjoy seeing you and you being here. So it all starts really right in here. I mean, you have chronologically the beginning of Clausen Marshall Racing through Brian Clausen, but a lot of the things he did, this is just an amazing way to celebrate his success on the racetrack. Yeah, and you know, really what we wanted to do, um, you know, when we lost Brian, um, I think probably the thing that I wasn't expecting was the, um, you know, the stories that we were getting from fans mm -hmm. and and all these interactions that he had away from the racetrack. Right. Um, you know, I think we all knew, and especially me, you know, being a big part of his racing for so long, is I knew who he was and what he was and the person he was at the racetrack. But we started getting all these stories from, you know, the hotel on morning of, uh, you know, Four Crown. And people would come up and start sharing these intimate moments with us um, that uh, were stories we didn't know. Yep. And so when we decided to continue racing, something that became important to me was that we would be able to do something that we could share back uh, with, the, with the fans of the sport. And uh, this, is, this is what we were able to create to do that. So it really starts from the beginning. Uh, yeah, it really does. through here, right? Yeah, so, so Brian... Um, Again, unbeknownst to me, really, yeah, he kept, I mean, just so much of, of things that, um, that were important to him in his career. Right. And really from the very beginning, right. you know, his, his very first fire suit was right. there, his very first helmet. Um, we've got the very first trophy that he ever yeah. won. Um, and so that was kind of like, oh, if we're going to do this, we've got this stuff. Let's just kind of build yeah. at least one wall that um, kind of shows his path through the sport. So... So do you have favorite places inside here that for you or things that really trigger a memory? I do. And, and you know, what's interesting is like, obviously, like everything has a, has my story right. with Brian, right? right. Like, uh, you know, that suit, um, that Pizer Fence Company was actually a guy I was driving a sprint car for. Because um, you were a race car driver. So that's how come I you, mean, got it. I mean, if, you got it naturally, yeah, right? Yeah. If you, if you use the term <laughs> loosely enough, I was a race car driver. But uh, but no, I was, I was driving for uh, the Pizer Fence Company and... Uh, um, Friday night, I think it was, we raced someplace, didn't have a good night, and, um, and, and Chuck Prather is the gentleman who owned it, and we decided that we were better friends than we were owner-driver, right. and uh, so, I, you know, he says I was fired, I say I quit, <laughs> but the next day he shows up at the quarter midget track, and, uh, you know, what are, what are you doing here, and he's like, well, I got something for, for Brian, and uh, it, was, it was that suit, yeah. and uh, he said, you know, I fired you, but not, you know, your kid will always drive for, for me if he wants to. So, uh, you know, so we got that and, you know, the helmet up there, we believe that was the very first autograph that he ever did on yeah, that it's helmet. pretty amazing, yeah. So then we get down into the, you know, further into it and you can uh, see where his, you know, this really does represent, this is when it got busy. Yep. Um, you know, the chasing 200, um, racing for Tony and the Silver Crown stuff. And then he went on to drive the 20 car, yep. uh, which is an iconic USAC sprint car. Um, USAC championships to the Chili Bowl display, some midget stuff, and then, and then this area here is uh, is is probably the most special to me because it represents um, the three wins that he had at Belleville. Yep. Um, you know, Belleville was um, that was the place where Brian felt sep. You know, he he was like that. Just that's the separator. Yep. Um, you know, you know, winning races and you know quarter miles and three eighths and even half miles are, are you know, special. If you do it at the level he was doing that, because man, when you go to Belleville, it just, it really separates the yeah. men's from the boys. And uh, and so for him to get to win it, you know, three times, and uh, you know, of course he was leading it for the fourth when when uh, he had his accident. Um, it, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to come in sometimes, sure. but, uh, yeah. but it, it definitely is a, uh, you know, it is a reflection of Brian. That is, uh, right. that is who Brian was and is. That's pretty amazing. And over yeah. here, you've sort of got a, a throwback to the beginning, but also some of this is typically where your Indy 500 yeah. stuff is. Right? Yeah, exactly. So um, again, you know, the Indy 500 became, it was always important to him growing up in Indiana, right? right? And, uh, you know, he was the kid that we would go race, but on, on practice days at the Speedway, he'd get out of school. I'd take him out of school. <laughs> uh, don't tell Di. But, uh, and we'd go down and we'd watch practice. Right. And, uh, and it was always the, you know, someday, someday. Right. And so in 2012, he got that opportunity yep. uh, with Sarah Fisher and, and, uh, and Andy. And, uh, 
So when we decided to do this room, um, Sarah and Andy actually reached out to me and they said, hey, um, we know you're doing this. We, we've got some stuff we want to give you. Yeah. And they basically had everything that was in the garage of, uh, from 2012. So um, the pictures up here are from the garage, obviously the signage that was above the garage and in the garage. And, uh, and what Sarah wanted to do was it was really brilliant because Brian was a rookie. He was young, not obviously not the traditional way now that you go Indy um, 500 racing. Right. Um, but she wanted to put stuff up that would remind Brian that, you know, if we have a bad day on the track, um, you pull into this garage and you're going to look around and be reminded what a, what a badass race car driver you right. were. So, so she has all that or had all that, gave it to us. Um, and uh, so we had this display. It was basically you'd walk in here and it would look just like the garage. Right. Um, but now a lot of that stuff has ended up at the uh, Sprint Car, National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. Yep. Um, they, they do some stuff where they rotate it in and out, uh, which is cool for us because sure. Brian gets represented. But not only does Brian get represented, but um, the Indy 500 right. IMS gets represented there as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So final question for you. Um, you lose Brian, um, but in a lot of ways, something you didn't know has probably put Brian's legacy on a platform that nobody, no matter how many races he won, um, the whole donor network piece mm -hmm. and the connection with the Indiana Donor Network and the idea that he was a donor, and we get to do that around the BC, really talk about Driven to Save. How powerful is that for you? Uh, it's, I mean, it's everything. Um, not only, um, you know, not only did he save five lives with his donation, um, you know, he literally saved my life with his decision to, to donate. Mm -hmm. um, and I share this story um, because I think it really brought to me the impact of it. So when we lost Brian, you know, we spent, you know, the, the 72 hours with him in the hospital as they got him healthy enough to be able to donate his organs. And as we were leaving, it was my wife that said, you know, we have a whole other team um, sitting in Knoxville, Iowa right now. We, we really need to go spend time with them. And, uh, you know, and she was right, 100% right. So we went there. And, and I say that to say this, is that the first morning I walked into Knoxville, um, which was a very special place to Brian and I, um, I had a gentleman walk up to me and, and, uh, you know, and he says, you know, Tim, can, can I share, can I share my, my story with you? So instantly I think he's gonna share Brian's story. Um, it had nothing to do with Brian. It was the story of his wife how she was a recipient and for years they had been trying to meet their donor family and for whatever reason they hadn't connected and uh, and he said I just want you to know that you you and your wife now give us that family to look at to represent donors so so I knew then how important it was and how important it was for us as a family to to make sure that we recognize that yeah. and uh, did I have any idea that you know that that little heart on the license was going to turn into, you know, where we are now. No, but I'm, I'm sure glad it, that it did. Well, that's pretty powerful, and it's meant a lot to our racing community. It also shows how the racing community can come together to support a family, but also together to make a difference. And you ought to be awful proud of Taylor. And speaking of Taylor, let's go back and talk to Taylor a little bit about how you all can participate and keep Brian Clausen's legacy going. So there you've seen it. All over central Indiana, Brian Clausen's legacy lives on. He was an amazing race car driver, but what he's done beyond his lifetime is more powerful than I think anybody, even Brian, probably understood. You know, you can participate as well to continue to help the Brian Clausen Foundation and the Brian Clausen legacy live on through the Brian Clausen Legacy Fund. Taylor, tell us how, as race fans, we can continue to support the mission that Brian started and your family continues. Yeah, one thing really cool about the Brian Clausen Legacy Fund is we provide, um, you know, things for donor families, um, funds to be able to help them through the donation process, gas cards, hotel stays, things like that, and we try to just take care of them from the start of donation to the end. And one way you can help is by donating to the Brian Clausen Legacy Fund. It's really easy. You just go to indianadonornetwork.org. We have a foundation website. Um, you go on there, and a part of that is the Brian Clausen Legacy Fund, and you can um, donate right there on the website. That's awesome. So there you go, race fans. Continue to support Brian Clausen's legacy through the Legacy Fund. That information, right below us. Click on it, make a donation. And in the meantime, we'll see you at the Driven to Save Lives BC39, presented by Avani Windows at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Taylor and I will be there, making sure you're signed up to be a donor.
Thank you, fans, for listening to this episode of Behind the Bricks. We look forward to bringing you more exciting content about the Indianapolis Motor Speedway soon. Thank you.